You will be surprised of the movies I have not seen. Check it. Welcome back, Nathan Nice, to another video, and welcome to my new segment, Nathan's First Time, but it's not what you think it is, where I give you my thoughts on a movie, or in this case, movies that have been out for a very, very long time, that I am seeing for the very first time. Before I get started, I hope you guys are doing well. I'm drinking my chamomile tea with some uh, phytoprotein powder and some honey. Kind of a crazy day out there. Uh, we just had a snowstorm, very, very cold, and it's very, very icy. And you know, I uh, can't remember tea helps me calm down my anxiety, which always works. So, but yes, I hope you guys are having a very good day, a very good week, and uh, continue to do so. So, uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, leave some comments down below, and uh, let's get started. So today, I'm going to be talking about the Godfather series. Now I know what you're thinking. What? You never saw the Godfather? How dare you? I know, right? <laughs> the reason why I waited so long was because of the fact that I wanted to be able to pay attention to the movie and be able to enjoy it because when I was younger I wanted to watch action movies and things that blow up so my attention span was a little bit um, low, small, narrow, I don't know. <laughs> and all I wanted to do and I also wanted to be able to understand what was going on with the the movie to you know understand what the story was about and all that and I could have done a reaction video on this but seeing that it, this is uh, three movies in one series this is all I was doing anyway and this that was pretty much my reaction right there I was really focused, so everyone wanted to understand, and, and you know, just enjoyed uh, what I was looking at. So, first, I'll say that the uh, the time jumps were the time jumps that throughout the whole series was a bit too much and uh, confusing, especially in part two. It was harder to follow because they were doing not only an origin story of uh, uh, Vito Corleone. Cori uh, while telling the story of uh, his son Michael Corleone, and they just didn't feel relatable. Not to mention that uh, Marlon Brando and Robert De Niro are two completely different actors, even though they were playing the same character Vito. Uh, they were playing the character Vito in their own way, and. It just kind of felt different, you know, so it's, uh, you know, you got Robert De Niro who does his own style of acting and of course you got Marlon Brando with his own style of acting and the way they were actually, the way that Marlon Brando was actually be able to put that character together was pretty cool. It was uh, pretty great. He, I think he did a terrific job playing uh, Vito, you know, with his mannerisms and his jaw and the way he spoke and all that. Robert De Niro didn't do that. Robert De Niro didn't have the jaw. He didn't have the mannerism. I'm gonna make him a deal that you can't refuse. He didn't do that stuff, you know what I mean? And uh, that's why I say they're two different actors just playing Vito in their own different way. I honestly think that Robert De Niro should have done a little bit of research. Or maybe he did, I don't know. Um, but I do think that he should have done a little bit of research in Godfather just to capture the essence of Marlon Brando's version of the character. That's just that's just what I think. So, and 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 of course uh, there was. I'm sure everybody was disturbed by this, but there was the uh, stallion's head scene that I thought was just a little bit too graphic. 
It does kind of make me wonder how they did that though. <laughs> Just, it looked very, very realistic. I, you know, it looked really real. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of curious in how they did that. They did a terrific job on that. But onto the positive stuff, um, it's, it was actually amazing how you know some of these talented legendary actors and actresses were, uh, you know, with the exception of Marlon Brando. But uh, that's a different story that I won't go into because it's not what I do. And yet, after almost 48 years, they are still kicking ass. I mean, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino and The Irishman, amazing. The story was good in part one. Uh, part two, again, was a bit confusing because of the time jump between the origin story of Vito and Michael's story. Good stuff. And uh, part three was a little bit better when uh, Michael Corleone, uh, when Michael Corleone was uh, trying to legitimize himself. I didn't like the uh, the whole cousin love story because you know they're cousins. Uh, so watching this was a bit different for me. I mean, it's not my kind of genre, but I'm glad I watched it. You know, it was a good experience and. Uh, it was a good experience getting to watch it, and I at least I get to say, hey, I watched The Godfather. It was also a good experience to watch Al Pacino, James Caan, uh, Robert De Niro, Talia Sire, Diane Keaton, all these legendary talents uh, at the beginnings of their career. And uh, again, I have to say, it was still pretty amazing getting to see how young this talent was. And uh, see them progress uh, throughout their career. It's, it's a really, there is a pretty good difference when you uh, get older, obviously, body changes, uh, but your acting style, uh, at the same time, your acting style evolves and they just get better. And they've always, uh, they've always been, um, they've always been uh, really talented at what they do. These guys took their job really, really seriously. So, I mean, I'm very sure that most of them started in theater. I mean, uh, that's that's pretty evident, uh, considering how uh, this talented cast uh, portrayed themselves as as the characters, and um, it's just uh, I just thought it was really good. And um, and of course we have to talk about Andy Garcia, uh, who uh, is actually in part three, and Sofia Coppola, who is the uh, who, who is an uh, accomplished film director herself and the daughter of the director of the Godfather series, Francis Ford Coppola. Uh, they were both in, uh, again, they were both in uh, part three. So uh, check it out, guys, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, and uh, tell me what you think. So it's worth it. It's really good. It's really good. And, oh, I should also mention that I did not see... Uh, the Godfather Coda, uh, the death of Michael Corleone, only because of what I read that that nothing really changed. Um, all they did was edit out uh, four minutes of uh, footage, and that was it. So I don't think anything really changed. Um, but if you guys think I should watch it, please leave a comment down below, and. Tell me why, tell me what you thought about it, and and, uh, and I'll check it out. The reason why they call it CODA uh, is because it, uh, the definition of CODA means epilogue, and the definition of epilogue means uh, the conclusion, uh, meaning that part three was going to be the last film. So, and of course, you know, we've got the death of Coley, uh, Michael Corleone. If you haven't seen the movie... Um, he dies. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty evident in the title. But, yeah, again, I just didn't uh, really want to watch it because of, um, what I read about it. So, uh, but again, yeah, if you guys want me to watch it, want me to check it out, uh, let me know in the comments and, uh, and I'll, and I'll check it out. So, um, but that is it for this video, you guys. So, I hope you enjoyed it. And... Please, uh, please smash the like button. Leave a comment down below again. And 
uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, you'll get more videos like this. I do plan on making more videos like this. You'll be surprised of the movies I have not seen. And I plan on making videos like this uh, in the future. So, uh, but yeah, uh, check out my stuff and uh, watch the videos. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video. Until then, live long and prosper. May the force be with you. Peace out, and I'll see you guys on the bounce. Cheers. Feels right, it feels right. I'm only saying that it feels right.